Well, thank you all for joining for the Friday Forum uh, to have a chance to talk about the J-Term. Uh, it proved to be a, a really great experience for, for our students, our alumni volunteers, and especially for, for us here at the college. So thanks for taking some time to talk about that. Um, before we, we jump in, uh, just some housekeeping. So what we'll do is we'll have our panelists uh, provide about five or seven minute reflections on their experiences uh, with the J-Term uh, leading their sessions. And then we'll save the, the remaining of time just to open it up for, for Q&A. Um, at, at that point, you know, just be sure to, to turn on your, your video screen if you'd like uh, to ask your question directly or if you put it into the chat, I'm happy to uh, ask that question as well. So just a little background on the J term. As you may know, uh, the college offered a, a January term uh, a number of years ago, and it, it, it was something that was really embraced by, by our current students at the time. Um, for those that are in the communications and marketing team, I know there's uh, a lot of us on, on the call today, um, we heard a lot when we promoted this year's J term from alumni, just talking about what an incredible experience it was for them, you know, back 35 years ago. Uh, the J term looked a little bit different back then. Uh, it was really based on classes that they couldn't take in a traditional semester. It provided them the opportunity to maybe take a course that they were interested in, but couldn't fit it into their, to their schedule. Uh, it also provided those students the opportunity to study abroad. Um, obviously, now we have uh, a really robust CGE program uh, for them to do that. So as we looked at the, the opportunity to uh, reboot the J-term this year, it, what we did was really center it around two main goals. The first, uh, at the most basic level, was just to keep students engaged. If you remember from the winter break, it, it was a longer than usual break, about two months. Uh, so the J-term served as a bridge, really, between the, the fall semester and the spring semester. But a little bit more um, substantial was the second goal. Uh, in alignment with some early aspirations for our strategic plan, it served as an opportunity to provide students with tangible life skills, skills that they can use in their careers and in their communities upon graduation. Um, and so we, we know from Gen Z research too, that that's what our students today are really, really looking for, is those tangible skills. We did a call out for uh, sessions and thank you to Andy and Mark and others who uh, volunteered to, to present um, once we received those sessions, we purposely categorized them into four main areas, networking, leadership, college and career skills, and advocacy. And I'm happy to say that uh, by and large, uh, the students really enjoyed the experience and found it valuable. We had nearly a thousand student registrations across all four class years, and 96% of the students who uh, took our post-event survey gave it a positive rating. So the students seem to, to really find it to be a valuable experience. I had the opportunity to, to watch a number of the sessions myself and I'll drop it into the chat, uh, just a link to our YouTube playlist a little later if you guys wanna watch after the fact. Um, but I found that all of the sessions to be really entertaining and informative. And, and the main reason for that is uh, because of our presenters. Our students are really lucky to, to get to learn from, you know, the four of you and then all of the rest of the presenters during the J-term um, every single day. So, so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Mark to just share a little bit about his experiences uh, with his meetups and prep sessions. Thank you, Mike. Can everyone hear me? Thumbs up. Thank you, Andy Hughes, for the great thumbs up. And Akeem, too. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be part of this panel and, and, and hear from my colleagues because I was very focused on the meetups and, and would love to hear more about what my colleagues were doing during the J-term while that was going on as well. Uh, you mentioned networking, Mike, and I believe we fit under that rubric, certainly, uh, in, in our program, uh, which is something interesting that, that 
I had wanted to do and was going to be doing anyway on campus if we had not encountered COVID-19. Uh, and this provided us an opportunity to uh, translate the, the type of program we were going to do into an online form, which had, which had some great advantages actually, which I'll definitely talk about. So our goal was targeting juniors and seniors, but our program was open to first years and sophomores as well. And the goal was really to expose them to various industry trends, job search advice and information, uh, particularly in light of COVID-19 and, and the changing job search landscape that, that we're all encountering currently. Uh, we wanted to focus on broad sectors, hoping to appeal to as many students as, as possible, but in particular, hearing from alumni and parents from the Gettysburg Network who either had recruiting experience in their organizations or had hiring authority so that they could really speak to what's going on out there currently and how students could best make the most of the situation. It was a collaborative effort between Center for Career Engagement, our department, as well as the college advancement team. And I thought that was a crucial relationship to be able to really tap into the network effectively to get a great panel for each of our two meetups. And I think uh, we did accomplish that with Kathleen Regenton uh, from College Advancement and from my team, Jamie Guilford, who's on this uh, Zoom, who did the lion's share of the, of the legwork for our, our side of the program. So a thank you to both of those wonderful partners. We ended up having a business industry meetup and a health and science industry meetup. Uh, we thought those would, would hit a lot of students, uh, interest areas, as well as uh, find alumni and parents quite easily. And, and that did prove to be the case. And so that, those were good starting points for us. We do plan to uh, continue with meetups and I'll talk about that at the end as well. Uh, another key thing for us was working with Com Marketing and the fact that Com Marketing was doing an, a campus-wide push, uh, making this seem like a campus-wide effort, which is what it was, you know, coming from Bob throughout the entire uh, campus community. And uh, I think that really helped sell it to students and parents as well to get them to really attend to it. And so that was a big plus. And I would like Com Marketing to work on all of our events from now on, Mike, to promote them so that we get attendance at everything. Um, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, we had uh, a cap though for our event. Our event was unique and then we made a cap because it was networking focused. We didn't want it to be overwhelming to the students or the people involved who were networking with them. So we laid a cap of 50 students for each. We did hit those caps from registration within I think the first few days, which shows the popularity of the J term this first year round, uh, the virtual J term I should say. And we ended up in the end having 80 plus students in total between the two. So we averaged over 40 uh, for each of them. So it worked out really well. Uh, what we did, though, was as part of the educational piece, Jamie and I did a prep event before each of the meetups so the students could have a better sense of how to prepare for meeting with employers, how to prepare to ask questions, how to prepare for breakout rooms in Zoom and, and that type of new networking that's going on today. And so that was, that was well attended as well. It was not mandatory. It was just strongly suggested. And, and I think that the students were really taking it seriously. So they did follow up by doing that and coming to those uh, prep presentations. We then had on Zoom a panel for each industry. Uh, we had a Q&A following that. And then we did the breakouts where we had smaller groups of students talking with each of the, uh, the panelists. And coming up, we have one-to-one -one conversations scheduled for many of the panelists on a first come first serve basis for our students to follow up with them throughout the course of the semester. So the J term lives on uh, into, into the spring for us as well. Uh, David Brennan kindly uh, was moderator for both of our, our meetup panels, the chair of the board of trustees and uh, retired CEO of AstraZeneca. And so he crossed both business and health and science and was the perfect person and, and enthusiastic moderator to have. We had representatives from Novartis, Sanofi, Huron Consulting, Walmart, LinkedIn, Kind, International, Google, Dell, JP Morgan, just to name some of them. Uh, it was fantastic. And, and the virtual J term allowed us to have those people. 
because they didn't have to have a huge time commitment. They did not have to spend an overnight stay in Gettysburg to be at an event, although we would have welcomed them and been happy to have them. Uh, there was minimal to no cost whatsoever in that part of it. Uh, and, um, you know, everyone was, was just coming from across the country and could stay where they were. It just worked out really nicely. And so we did it at 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. We thought that might work well for all uh, East Coast, West Coast, and in between. And if we had anyone from abroad, we might be able to make that work for them as well. Uh, feedback was, was extraordinarily positive from the panelists. Uh, every one of them to the person wrote unsolicitedly how much they enjoyed it, how much they were impressed with the students. And the students have said, uh, you know, only good things and they hope there's more of them, which there will be. Uh, very positive uh, feedback. One student said, best event I ever attended at, at Gettysburg. And I, I was happy to hear that. I, I think there are better events probably at Gettysburg. Uh, some of the ones we'll hear about today, in fact. But um, I, I accepted that feedback, certainly. And uh, we even already had our first student through the networking that was done get an internship at Dell. So we've had a positive result already. Uh, many of the, the alums and parents have said that the students have reached out to them to follow up. So they are learning the ropes of networking and continuing to pursue these mentors in these conversations. It's a way for natural mentoring to occur. And it's, it's a really great way to do that. And so we will be doing a data science meet up this spring and a public policy meet up this spring. And this hopefully will be an ongoing tradition, rotating industries, rotating areas, uh, you know, moving forward in, in the, the months and, and years to come. So I will stop there and uh, pass it on to the next wonderful panelist. Well, thanks, Mark. You know, I, I, like you touched on, the, the J term was a great opportunity to get alumni involved. Across all of our sessions, we had over 40 alumni participate, which is just amazing. Um, and Hakeem did an amazing job with, with his session for Peace and Justice Week to, to bring in alumni and their perspectives. Hakeem, do you wanna talk about your sessions? Sure, thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me today. Um, it's wonderful to be on, on this panel um, with my esteemed colleagues. Um, and I wanna thank, I don't think she's here today, but thank um, Jean, Jen Bloomquist for organizing um, this panel today, great idea. So um, we have had now uh, three peace and justice weeks at, at Gettysburg College. And so um, when the provost asked if P and J could plan um, a week of programming for J term, we leapt at the opportunity because it was a chance for us to have a fourth Peace and Justice Week. Um, and so that's how, that's how we framed it. Um, our theme was a call to action. Um, those of you who know me um, know that in my classes and talking with students, I'm always trying to encourage them to merge theory and practice. Um, because I think it makes for stronger researchers, stronger thinkers in the world, um, stronger doers. Um, when we're able to, to merge both of those. And so our, our week of programming really reflected that synergy um, where they got some inspiration and they got some tools and then they saw how to merge both of those, yeah? Um, so what was, what was our, our exact structure? And so I agree with Mark that it was very nice having this being virtual because we were able to snag a number of persons who I think if it were in person, we perhaps would not have been able to get them on campus. Um, one of them being the deputy director of Women's March, who is very busy, very sought after. And it was so lovely for our students to get to learn from her. Um, we paired her with um, Luis Hernandez, um, who is a founder of his own organization. And he is the age of some of our students. Um, another person and the activist who presented Victoria Panel, who's at Duke University, um, is also the same age as our students. That was intentional. I wanted our students to see that you don't have to get a degree to make a difference in the world. You don't have to go get a doctorate you know, to make a difference in the world. That you could start right now, that these are folks your age, right? Making waves in the world. Um, and I think that was really exciting and empowering for our students to see that in action, like we're just not talking about it. you're actually seeing people their age doing their work in the world. 
Um, and so that was, that was really lovely. I think the most powerful um, a session, well, two of them, was, was one with uh, Luis Hernandez and Tabitha Simbernard from Women's March, where they did a workshop on community and political organizing. Um, right? Um, so, you know, often the peace and justice program, as uh, students hear about the causes of war and different interventions. Um, and, but I don't think we offer enough skills building. And so I think many students um, left at the opportunity um, to be part of that workshop and they left with a resource list. And of course, I, I heard some of them have been contacting um, the workshop leaders um, to get um, some follow-up trainings. Uh, the other, I think really powerful session um, was with alumni. Um, we had maybe six or seven alumni who were peace and justice minors here, and they are involved in myriad careers and, and around the world, you know, from lawyers working in the state department, uh, uh, one person's a teacher in DC, one person works in community development. Um, it was important for me to show students that, you know, although peace and justice is not a, a major, I think many peace and justice minors, um, that interest um, animates a lot of, of, of their own ideology um, and their own goals for themselves when they leave here. Um, and it was important for them to see that you could take this peace and justice mind and do almost anything with it, right? It is truly interdisciplinary. And they saw that in action. They saw people in their careers doing work um, for which they're very passionate. Um, and students spoke about their time here at the college. They spoke about how the peace and justice minor equipped them in certain ways, um, whether intellectually, theoretically, or practically um, for the world thereafter. Um, and what was exciting, it was that I heard a number of students have remained in contact with some of those alums and trying to get internships with them. And I would love to see that amplified. Um, I would love to see a more concerted effort here at the college to bring more of our alumni back because they, they don't say no, they're just so excited. Like I just asked like a quick question. Do you wanna come up with this? And before I finish my sentence, we're like, yes, count me in, when? When do I show up and where? Um, and so I love that. And I'm like, I think we really need to cash in on that, on that, that, um, that energy. No pun intended from a developmental standpoint, um, but that's important too. But um, many of them who can't give money can certainly give of their time and other resources. Um, and I think we can do a better job um, in that respect. Um, students were involved in the planning of this and they moderated the panels. I just came in um, at the beginning just to introduce it very briefly and I stepped back, which is my goal with Peace and Justice. I want to be able to plant the seeds and step back and to let the students take over. Um, it's the same approach we did with um, planning that CONAP conference that hopefully will come off this year as a virtual conference. And in everything that I do, I try to give students the, the skills and the frameworks that they need, and then I step back so that they can do, they can do the work because I, I want them to feel empowered to kind of take charge and run the world, yeah? Um, what worked well? Um, I really loved that there were no concurrent sessions. I think that was important. Um, and I think earlier when the provost asked, I, I mentioned that and I said, I hope that our sessions would not clash with any others because I would want to attend others and I want students to be able to enjoy uh, the panoply of options um, during that week. Um, so I think that worked, that worked really, really well. Um, marketing and communications, A, A plus. That was really wonderful. And I agree with Mark that I don't think as many students would have attended this if they didn't get a sense that the president, provost, and the entire college apparatus was behind this. Um, it, it, it gave it the, the imprimatur, I think, of, oh, this is something serious and we should really pay attention to this. Um, so I do agree with Mark. Anything going forward where we're trying to plan stuff on this scale, we definitely need to have um, the, the technical wizardry of communication and marketing involved. Um, what would I tweak up for next year? Um, I, I want to see Gettysburg College break down the walls between us and the community even more. We did have a session with CPS um, and some of our community partners. The so students were able to see who are some of our most valuable community partners and how to get involved. I want to see more of that and not in a tokenized kind of way. I really want to see the college engaging more of the community. I think some of our sessions should have been open to our community because they also can learn. And um, it is symbolic, right? Because if you open your doors to the community for free, right you, you build up goodwill amongst our community members and so i would like to see us i'd like to see us do more of that 
um, I am I'm thinking in the future um, about possibly for our JTM, not on my own, but for the college thinking about this, maybe offering students 0.25 credit towards graduation for our participation, either in, in a JTM or, or in summer terms where they're getting skills building. Because I think during the semester, they focus on their classes, it's a bit difficult for them to attend as many things that they would, they would like to. But maybe during the summer and during the JTM, they can get some credit. Maybe if they do four of them at point, what, 0.25, then that makes for one full point And maybe that could help offset maybe one one unit that they would have fallen behind during one of their eight semesters here so that that's just something for us to consider um going forward um and i think that's i think i'll stop there thank you so much again i'm looking forward to hearing from the rest of you all well thank you so much akeem as always your sessions were just incredible so really appreciate you uh stepping forward and, and presenting during the j term uh you spoke a little bit about your how you intentionally structured uh your sessions and so I'm gonna turn it over to Andy who had a different structure, uh, but also equally as effective. Andy, do you wanna talk about that? Yeah, absolutely, Mike. And certainly thanks to, to Jan and uh, for having us here, but also to, to you for, for moderating. And I have to give a shout out to communications and marketing. I mean, to take this vision and bring it into reality uh, was a phenomenal feat during these times and all the things you, you, your team's been doing. So thank you for that. Um, and thanks to Gettysburg for having this vision, right? To try something new in a time where we are uh, certainly feeling um, the difficulty of the pandemic. So I, I think this was just such a pleasure to be a part of. And, you know, one thing about the structure, Mike, that you mentioned is we, we know that our students are curious learners, right? And so I, I think when I approach this idea for a J-term experience, I wanted to focus on really tapping into that sense of learning because uh, I, I think just to sometimes on the in the virtual sphere just to sit and watch something uh, doesn't really hit home to demonstrate some of the skills that we need our students to be be learning and practicing. So in the structure, we we said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to make it practical in nature. We want to give students something to do, right and uh, I'm sure many of you in your conversations with student leaders on campus have that they've missed these experiences to be a part of their clubs, part of their activities, and are craving to do something with other people. And of course, I look at that as an act of leadership. So we thought, well, what are some things that we could have students do online that practices some of the skills of leadership? And uh, we decided to do over the two weeks of J-Term, four different sessions, that were for the same group of people. So think of it as a cohort experience. And that uh, those four sessions were centered around uh, a, an online simulation where in groups of five, students work together to make decisions to actually summit to the top of Mount Everest in a virtual sphere. So I'm sure uh, some of the, the professors on the call have done some kind of um, case study or visual um, uh, virtual learning experience. But this actually comes out of the, the Harvard uh, Education Resource Group. And uh, students work together in groups of five to each of them played a different role, whether that was the photographer, um, maybe uh, the leader of the group, and they had to make decisions throughout a 90 minute session to be able to uh, determine whether or not they meet individual and team goals. So of course, from a student perspective, this is great, right? You're sort of in the moment, you're, um, you have a goal that you're working towards. Uh, and so that was the center of the experience. What we decided to do beyond just a, a sense of practice, we wanted to give them a sense of connection as well. So uh, we, we made it a team-based experience. And you, students could elect to sign up as a team. So we had a number of students that said, you know, we're, we're connected in this way. We want to do the simulation together. But most of the students actually said, you know, I'm, I'm an individual student. I, I want to get connected to other students. And, and so I think that was, for me, one of the greatest learnings is our students just wanted to have an experience where they got to, to talk to people who, you know, are not sort of in their family or, or not in a class. So I think that was another, another piece there. So that 90 minute simulation was actually session three. 
the two sessions before that, um, we introduce them to some core theories and some research about what makes an effective team. Because as you know, that uh, how important in leadership it is to be able to work with a team, to notice and leverage the, the differences of people in your team. We wanted to uh, approach it from that lens. And so we did that in a number of ways. We, we gave the, the, the teams activities to do for themselves. They did some reflection exercises where they came up with a, um, a team crest where they had to define uh, visually and symbolically what are their values? Uh, what are the, the unique differences that each team member brings to, to that setting? So uh, giving them a sense of, of identity there. Uh, we also introduced sort of five core characteristics that comes out of um, a project called Project Aristotle done by um, the researchers at Google that, that identified some inclusive team strategies. We also invited in our second session, uh, much like Mark and Hakim, is to bring in alumni. And so we had um, four alumni to, from different industries to talk about their perspective on what makes effective teams. So we had, of course, the, the, the lovely Carol Cantelli, who is an alum, but also our uh, women's lacrosse coach uh, to provide an athletic perspective. And then we had four younger alumni who I think were certainly, to, to Hakeem's point, more connected to the students who could provide a good sense of uh, perspective there. And those were from the industries of healthcare, which is sort of pivotal for today, right, in the pandemic, um, consulting at Deloitte, and then also in, in tech um, as well. So different perspectives of how teams might manifest across different industries. And then, so the, the students did the simulation in our fourth session, we did a reflection to say, what did you learn? What were some of the, the things that went well that didn't go well? And um, overall, we were really pleased with, with the output and the feedback from students. I think what surprised me the most was around the fact that they kept coming back, right? When you have four sessions virtually, um, we, we originally said, we, we want about 30 students in the program. We had 54 students apply, and then every session had at least 47 students, which to me, I think, uh, was a really good signal of that retention that students were engaged and they wanted to keep coming back to each, um, each of the sessions. Um, some of the other learnings I think that, that was profound was, it was amazing to me how many students said uh, how important it was to connect with their peers and, um, you know, I know that that, that might not sound uh, too surprising, but um, I think to give that time and space for that, I think is really important. The other piece in, in our feedback was around the practical nature of it. So we asked students, how are they applying uh, what they learned now? And one student talked about a conf conflict that he had um, on campus with, um, with a, a group of people in his building, right? So he was thinking about that as a team building skill and was able to use some of the, the, the learnings from the session. Um, so I, I think for me, there's some really good output for the students. I think for us as the Gothwaite Leadership Center and, and as educators here, I think it, it also gives us the sense of hope that if we build these experiences for students, we promote connection, uh, we make it practical, um, and give them something to do, then I think our students will engage and continue to, to be the, the curious learners that they are. Thank you so much, Andy. You and the, the GLC team always do a wonderful job for the students. So thank you for, for hosting those sessions. Um, you touched a little bit on, on the skill building uh, of your sessions. And I know I'll pass it over to our, our last panelist, Hannah. Um, her sessions really focused on some skills that students could directly apply to their campus experience right now. So Hannah, you wanna take it away? Thank you, Mike, and thank you for having me. I will agree with everyone else also that communications and marketing really made all of this happen. Um, our attendance um, that I'll share numbers in a minute was definitely higher than any other kind of workshop that we would have had. Um, so we're very appreciative of that. Um, so the Office of Academic Advising and Student Support Services, we really participated in J-Term because we wanted to find different ways to connect with students that we normally wouldn't have the opportunity or a means to do over the winter break. Um, and we really focused on 
the practicality and tangible things that students could walk away with. Um, we've had a lot of concerns from students that they struggle with the online format um, and not necessarily because um, it's taught in a certain way or how it's taught by faculty, but because they've never done it before. And so it's all new. Um, and they were also struggling with how to stay organized and motivated when they're working remotely, um, when their bed and Netflix are, you know, <laughs> fighting for their attention or their academic work, it's really hard for them to stay motivated. So that's why we um, participated wanting them to really engage during the academic um, break and then come back prepared, whether that was going to be um, back on campus this semester, which some are still virtual, even though they're on campus, or whether they were staying home. So we wanted them to have those skills um, and be ready for the spring semester. We structured it with two different sessions. The first one was focused on time management and the second one was building successful habits because many students have said they have a lot of habits. Many of them are not um, helping them be successful. Um, and then how to implement study strategies, especially in that remote environment. So those study strategies might be different than what they have found has worked in the past. Um, so we did afternoon sessions, hoping that that would appeal to the age group. We did one to three uh, p.m. So the two hours in length, uh, we focused the bulk of the instruction in the first hour and a half. And then we had a student panel of current students that are on campus um, share some things at the end um, for the last half hour. Um, I'm just reading my notes here. Hopefully I don't look like I'm looking past you. So the student panel at the end, I think was really well received by the participants. I invited for my session, um, six students who are current students on campus from a variety of different backgrounds, students who have studied abroad, um, students who have worked from home and found successful ways to do that. Um, so we had a variety of the um, students participate. Each had a different unique perspective and it really helped students kind of open up. They put a lot of questions in the chat. Um, and I think each and every student also shared that this is kind of a learned behavior. You know, they didn't come in first year at Gettysburg being a stellar student, that this was something that they have to learn and grow and figure out what works and what doesn't work. Um, so I think the students really enjoyed having other peers um, participate and share their perspectives in that way. Um, some of the tangible skills, you know, we wanted real life strategies um, that they could start implementing. You know, we encouraged them to try them before they came back to campus. So hopefully they did that and before the semester got underway. Um, but we chose to focus on um, the common concerns that students share with us. The time management is huge, um, waiting to the last minute to work on assignments, how to avoid doing that um, when you've large amounts of reading not waiting till the last minute to get it all done, um, how to break things up when they're struggling um, with those types of things. So really taking any type of poor habit and turning it into something that you can um, become a little more successful. What we've heard from participants so far is that a lot of them have requested for the same types of things to happen on campus. So we are hosting some things during um, their day off on March 2nd and April 7th. So hopefully we have some participation. I'm doing some that are both in-person and then also virtual to, to try to um, reach as many students as possible. Um, we had 73 participate in each session. So 73 at the time management and 73 um, on the habits and study strategies. So that is by far more participation than we usually have at our workshops. Um, and since we have uh, the recording on YouTube, thanks to CNM, I think the, the one is over 100 views or right at 100 views. Um, so I don't think that that makes us YouTube sensations yet, but it means students are still referring back to them, um, which is always good. Um, I think most of the students on the um, call kept their cameras off. So I think they were not um, engaged as far as like an interactive workshop. Um, but it serves a purpose, you know, just like this call, people can be eating their lunch, they can be taking notes, they might be checking email on the side, you know, there's different ways that students um, and adults want to, to connect. So I think it gave us a new opportunity to try that. Um, and I think it was well received by students uh, in that way. I would definitely um, recommend that we do it again in the future. 
Um, and like some others have said, even branch out to some type of summer engagement. Students are looking for credit and non-credit opportunities. Um, and I think when it's free as a non-credit, they were still willing to participate. And I think the fact that they showed up over the winter break um, and engaged, and once we stopped recording, many of them turned their cameras off, back on and, and stayed and chatted for a while. So I think they were really craving that connection. Um, and I think it was nice that we had a, a quite a variety and diversity in our in our offerings. So I think all of that, you know, overall we targeted um, certain students who have IAPs, students who um, got progress reports throughout the semester, anyone who we had already connected with, you know, we gave them a special invite. Um, but I think overall they they knew about it and they were hungry to have that connection over the break. Thank you so much, Hannah, uh, to you and the, the academic advising team. Uh, you guys held some terrific sessions. Uh, a lot of the comments that, that we received in the survey uh, focused on those sessions and, and how helpful they were. And, and just so you know as well, um, admissions will be sending those, those videos out to prospects soon as well uh, as, as an opportunity for them to, to learn more about how to come to college prepared. So, so thank you very much. So at this point, we're going to open it up for uh, Q&A. If you have any questions, uh, be sure to just, you know, turn on your, your video if you'd like or, or drop it into the chat and our panelists will, will look to answer those. Questions or comments? If not a question, maybe a comment or a thought about this? Well, let's give every let's give our, our panelists and Mike a round of applause, virtual or Otherwise, uh, thank you all. I, I personally found this fascinating. Um, you know, I knew this was happening, but it was great to hear more details about how it actually all played out. Mike, I jumped on your toes. Maybe do you have any other comments that you wanted to make? Or no, I, I, I'll just uh, you know close it out by by thanking everybody that's been involved with the the J term. Um, you know, as as President Yuliano dropped in the chat, it, it was something that, that came together very quickly for the institution. Uh, and so it, it required a number of people to just, you know, step forward and, you know, try to make it happen. So um, it, it seemed to be very valuable for our students. And so it's it's because of all, all of you that made it made it work. So thank you very much. And, you know, next year, if we do do it again, just in, encourage your colleagues to, to consider it and to get involved and definitely, uh, share it with your students as well. So, so we do have a hand raised from Austin. Hi, everybody. Um, so I enjoyed the talk and um, some of the things that came up for me. Um, this is, I guess, kind of me brainstorming a project that I've thought about, but I wondered if anybody had any commentary on it. So um, I am thinking about putting together like in a first year seminar course to work with the Center for Public Service to do um, some type of public art project like mural painting or something like that. And I've also um, in the past taken my students to a local sign painter shop, Marty Mummer Signs. And it's kind of cool for them to get a different sort of exposure over that. Um, one downside of teaching it as a first year seminar would be that most of the students coming in don't have any experience in painting, you know? Um, but I think you could work around that. Um, but then as I was, you know, considering what you were uh, talking about with the J term course, I wondered if that would be something to explore as well. The hitch there would be probably mural painting in um, January isn't going to work outside unless you have an indoor location or something. But um, it's something that I'm yeah, planning on following through, not for next year, but maybe the following year in a first year seminar. And I'd be curious to hear your um, any suggestions or comments, or if there is crossover to work with the Leadership Center as well as CPS. It wasn't for a specific person, I guess. So I'm sorry to address Anyone have that. Any thoughts? You're getting a few positive feedback comments in the chat if you don't see Austin, but. I guess a question that I have about it in terms of working with, I imagine I would go to CPS and we would work with and hey, Keem, I love the way you're talking about, you know, embracing with the community. And so I haven't really jumped into it yet, but some of the questions are about like, what are the organizations that are um, there and how do you, you know, 
do you let the students sort of pick the organization that you work with or um, would it be good to also get the uh, community involved in on the painting and whatnot when we get towards herd immunity? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Brenda's on this call and Brenda's with CPS. You wanna chime in? Yes, um, and that's an exciting idea and we'd be really happy to, to continue the conversation and connect you with our local community partners and, and kind of um, see where that, that goes. Um, but very exciting um, to, to be able to do a, a public art um, exposition, yeah. Okay, thank you. I just thought I'd throw that out there since there weren't any other questions. I it think it's like an amazing idea. As the former director of the first year seminars, Austin, I think that is a, a great outlet for something like that. And I think, yeah, I mean, I'll make the general comment that I think, um, right, I think there was some intentionality in the J term not trying to rely too heavily on faculty this year, partly because of speed and we were all waist deep in the semester when this was all getting put together. Um, I think if this is going forward as something that has some time to pause and think about it a little more, um, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities for, you know, first year seminar types of activities to spin out into J term types of activities um, and other courses, not just first year seminars. Although I think that there's a reason that's a natural fit. Okay, thank and you I so have much. A question from students, if they can live on campus when they're taking the summer class um, over the summer. So it would be a great opportunity to do something as a summer course too, um, if you couldn't find a way to figure it out during an actual semester. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know if there would be any crossover in terms of like leadership and the professional development internship aspect. Like I know that's more what the G term was about, but that is one thing about taking the student, painting students to the sign shop is not only do they learn about a different type of painting than we teach academically, but they also see that it's a business, you know? And like, he's making signs that are um, in some cases like contract with anthropology and uh, some of them are on TV, like in the back of the Big Bang Theory and things like that. And then he's also just painting signs like in town as well. So, um, but yeah, thank you everyone for your comments. Are there other comments or questions or ideas? Well, again, I want, I, you know, I know Bob said it before and others have said it. I want to you know, say also, thank you guys for the work you did to put this, the J term together, you know, first and foremost. And secondly, thanks for giving this talk and this presentation so we could all learn a little bit more about it. Um, and if there's nothing else, let's maybe give another virtual round of applause. I'll give an actual one. <laughs> And thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope you can enjoy a little bit of this warmer weather and take care everyone. <laughs>